AI does not replace critical thinking. It does not replace uh, creativity. And it does not, um, it does not, uh, and, 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 and there does not, uh, it, it does not, ab you cannot abdicate your responsibility for ethics. So, uh, so reflexivity is very, very important in the use of AI. So even where machine learning and, and, and vast you know, amounts of data are, are processed, even through a, 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 a language model, and uh, you know, requires you know, prompt engineering to tweak. Um, it also requires to, you to be critical of the fact that certain tools um, begin to hallucinate, and they will fabricate because you, you're, you, you may be influencing the, 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 the direction and to give you the story you want. Now you can. You, everybody has the narrative uh, ability to create the narrative, uh, but I think there's a lot more critical thinking when you're actually pouring through the, the the texts by you know flipping through the papers themselves or going to the library. Even when you know we were using Boolean logic in the um, you know uh, in in 1980 when I started graduate, I could go to the to the library and I can go and get a search uh, and pull out literature on a variety of search. But at some point you've got to make some critical decisions and you've got to read the stuff. Um, and uh, and make and, and make those de and make those decisions accordingly, and build your, your research ideas, and uh, and 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 get a, a full appreciation, understanding of, of research. I mean, one of the f things that we see now in the earliest applications of, of generative AI is the number of uh, PhD students who are failing uh, comprehensive examinations, and the very nature in which the literature review occur, uh, uh, unfolds. Every PhD student, in, as I've understood and known from my own personal experience, that's the first thing they do is sit down and do a literature review, right? Well, now you can do a literature review like in, in hours, right? I mean, or seemingly to do a literature review in hours. But um, what's happening is that cognitive downloading, oh, look at the you know, student says, well, I just yeah. recent, reviewed a thousand papers. This is what I found, right? Yeah. And um, and that's that's that abdication uh, is uh, and uh, an approach to uh, generative AI is what we need to, to um, you know work uh, you know work against and and but at the same time look at the power of generative AI in which the speed and the vast amounts of data that can be analyzed um, and the, the the benefits of that that will have um, going forward. But it, the methodological features around how it generative AI and AI tools are used are not well established yes. um, yet, exactly. And so, in fact, I actually have a postdoc who uh, comes out of a PhD in machine learning from South Korea, and we're very much looking at that very feature of, um, of, of the methodology um, in the approach to uh, understanding how AI is impacting the future of work, for, and which is a, a side um, hustle of mine in terms of <laughs> some of the work I do overseeing the Future Skills Center and my engagement with Magnet on campus. But, uh, but, but fundamentally, it comes down to, okay, well, if we're using these AI tools, we need to really begin to describe how our approach is. And does this approach create a framework that makes sense for, um, uh, for others as well? And, and the importance of prompt engineering, and that requires deep expertise. So here I am, a microbiologist by background, really interested in the power of AI uh, and generative AI and on, on work and, and the tools that would lend itself to research and so forth, to recognize that you, know, uh, you, you, you can't ignore the deep expertise that you require. And every research group leader or recognizing anybody who works to work in this field should have beside them you know, people who have deep technology expertise. And, and yes, there's a lot to be gained from just reading the extent literature or playing around with, you know, uh, you know uh, OpenAI and O3 and, um, and all the various tools that Google and Microsoft are, 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 are loading into their systems now. But at some point, you really have to, that, 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 that's just eating at the, at the, at the fringe rate. Really. And, and, and really, um, you know, people have to step back and really take a hard look at how they're using AI and being much more critical of it. I'm, I'm quite, you know what, my, my memory just went back to the day said, oh, nowadays we're sitting and talking about the challenge of that AI era versus the, the graduate study and research over the last 10 or 20 years versus our days when doing a literature review was more challenging, where there was no internet at that time. And I just like, okay, how did I make that decision of going to the graduate study versus after I graduated, there was two opportunities, either to go to industry or to continue in the academia. 
And honestly, the offer for the industry was, I would say, four or five times what I'm, I'm getting in terms of uh, salary on the academia. But um, I would say fortunate now I made that decision. But how Stephen made that decision to okay pursue a graduate study after your undergrad? Why did you go to a graduate study? Why didn't you just go to the you know job market where there are high potential to make a lot of money? And there was a lot of challenges at that time for the research. It's not that like nowadays. Oh, my God.